Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The Mighty One God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. God says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities for pleasing you. Grant that we may pass its hours in the freedom of your service, and when evening comes, give you thanks again. Amen. Psalm 119 To eternity, O Lord, your word is fixed firmly in the heavens. For generation after generation, your faithfulness remains. You established the earth, and it stands. As for your judgments, they stand to this day, because all things are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. To eternity, I will not forget your precepts, because by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, because I have sought your precepts. The wicked are lying in wait for me to kill me, but I will ponder your testimonies. I see a limit to all perfection, but your commandment has no limits. How I love your laws. I meditate on them all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, because it is always with me. I have more wisdom than all my teachers, because your testimonies are my meditation. I have more understanding than the elders, because I guard your precepts. I have kept my feet off every evil path in order to keep your words. I have not turned from your judgments, because you yourself have instructed me. How sweet are your sayings to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. From your precepts I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every false road. Your words are a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I have sworn and affirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I have suffered much. Lord, give me life according to your words. Lord, please accept the willing praise from my mouth and teach me your judgments. I take my life in my hands constantly but I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not wandered from your precepts. I have inherited your testimonies forever. Yes, they are the joy of my heart. I turn my heart to do your statutes forever, right to the end. The word of the Lord. A reading from Joshua chapter 3. After Joshua had gotten up early in the morning, he and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and arrived at the Jordan. They stayed there until they crossed over. After three days, the officers went through the camp and gave this order to the people. As soon as you see the priests from the tribe of Levi carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, you are to set out from your position and follow the Ark but keep a distance between you and the ark, about 3,000 feet. Do not get too close to it, so that you can determine which way you should go, because you have never crossed over this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, because tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Then Joshua said to the priests, Lift up the Ark of the Covenant and pass by in front of the people. So they lifted up the Ark of the Covenant and went ahead of the people. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so that they will know that just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You are the one who will give this order to the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. As soon as you come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you are to stand still in the Jordan. 
Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come closer to me, and listen to the words of the Lord your God. Then Joshua said, This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will most certainly drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Look, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is about to cross over the Jordan ahead of you. So now choose for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from each tribe. As soon as the soles of the feet of the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, come to rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing down from upstream will be cut off, and they will stand up in one heap. So the people set out from their tents to cross the Jordan, and the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of the people. As soon as the priests carrying the Ark came to the Jordan, and as soon as their feet dipped into the edge of the water, the Jordan is full and overflows all its banks during all the days of the grain harvest. The waters flowing down from upstream came to a standstill. The waters piled up in one heap very far away at Adam, the town that is next to Zarathan, and the waters flowing down to the Sea of the Araba, that is the Salt Sea, were completely cut off. So the people crossed the Jordan opposite Jericho. The priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel was crossing over on dry ground, until the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Acts chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any men or women belonging to the way, he might bring them to Jerusalem as prisoners. As he went on his way and was approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? He replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, but get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you need to do. The men traveling with him stood there speechless. They heard the voice, but did not see anyone. They raised Saul up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. They took him by the hand and led him into Damascus. For three days he could not see, and he did not eat or drink. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord told him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. In fact, at this very moment he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he can regain his sight. Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many people about this man and how much harm he did to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has authority here from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. The Lord said to him, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the people of Israel. Indeed, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Ananias left and entered the house. Laying his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, whom you saw on your way here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul stayed with the disciples in Damascus for several days. 
Immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Isn't this the one who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? Didn't he come here for this very purpose, to bring them as prisoners to the chief priests? But Saul continued to get stronger and kept confounding the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. The Word of the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray that you would so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 